Good morning, lovely people. Nice to see you. I see there's a few people online already. Ah, so this is your um, Yoga Solutions Live broadcast coming to you on a Tuesday. I, I've reverted to the 10.30 slot. This gives me a bit more time to practice in the morning, and uh, I like to turn up having practiced. So let's see, let's see what we've got here. Um, hi, Caroline. Nice to see you. Um, breath choices and how these affect change the hips and pelvis. Very good. Very good question. Um, Alan, nice to, nice to see you, mate. Um, after the weightlifting last week. Oh, by the way, um, check out Alan. Uh, he's, um, he, he's a Tai Chi person, uh, but he's been doing my course and he's, um, He's sort of applying the principles to his work, and I, I think he's going to be changing the world of Tai Chi. So, so do uh, check in with him. Caroline, uh, check her out as well. She's a she's a uh, already a teacher, and she's working with me. Excellent stuff. And Kishori, Kishori has qualified with me, living in Spain at the moment. I don't think she's up for work for anyone <laughs> with anyone at the moment. But um, if you get a chance to work with her, she does amazing um, stuff. Anyway, uh, back to topic. Um, anything to uh, so Kishori, anything to help with it, restoring natural curves, strength and flexibility of spine, standing more upright. Okay. Unraveling distortion, effort and tension in my back. Any inspiration? Sure. Um, effort and tension. These are very subjectively um, quali um, these are very subjectively assessed qualities. Um, it's hard to refer to yoga in terms of how it, you know, what muscles we use, how much effort is involved. It's much more interesting and much more useful to um, uh, measure or, or approach our yoga in terms of um, what, it is, what it is that we're actually doing. <laughs> so uh, you know how it is. If, you, if, you're, if you're tuning into how, thing, how something feels, um, like, as, okay, you go to a dentist and you're, and you're on alert for how, whether it's going to hurt you or not when they're drilling your tooth. And the, the whole system goes into this sort of adrenal mode of um, looking out for sensation. And uh, when there is sensation near your tooth, you will interpret that as pain and difficulty because of your situation. So, and it's a bit like that when we do our yoga. It's... Um, especially if we have a complicated relationship with our bodies. If, if our relationship to our bodies is, uh, if, if what we're familiar with is um, ideas of effort, strength, tension, hi Kishori, um, ideas of effort, strength and tension, um, then that's what we'll be applying to our body work and we'll be looking out for those sensations and we'll be identifying what we need to do with the effort involved, uh, which isn't that useful. Um, I'll go into it uh, more as we practice because um, it's it's more interesting to actually just experience what I'm talking about rather than understanding the concept. So, Alan, uh, after the weight lifting last week, how about chaturanga or yoga press ups? <laughs> um, bring that to the Zoom class, Alan. Okay, uh, we're doing a Zoom class for Equivalent students tonight, so I uh, bring that one to the Zoom class. I think this. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, um, it, it, it's interesting, it's an interesting practice, but I, I, I don't want to do anything that's inherently um, difficult for people, because, uh, I mean, the idea would be to ha how to do plank, chaturanga, or yoga press-ups without strain, that would be the, that would be the investigation, so we can look at that tonight, i um, not sure if we'll manage it, <laughs> it's a particularly difficult posture. And um, I, I'm not I'm not sure of its value apart from um, apart from seeing if, you, seeing if you can find more ease within it. But um, we're, we're, well, if you like, we'll do it on the Zoom tonight. Okay, so um, I think the thing I'm going to work with is uh, breath choices and how these affect change the hips and pelvis. So I think that's a natural um, aspect of of Kishore's question. Anything to do with, and actually, Alan, um, the thing I, I think I'm, I'm going to share is we'll, we'll teach you how to do chaturanga and the rest of it. In fact, I think, um, yes, so anything to help with 
restoring natural curves, strength and flexibility of the spine. Okay. Breathing, strength, flexibility of the spine. I think that's going to be it and how uh, the, 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 the hips will be affected. Okay. So um, I have this um, practice that I teach. It's, it looks very simple. It looks very simple because it, sensibly it's lying down. <laughs> um, but it's, um, if you can engage with lying down in a, in a direct physical way, um, we can use it to understand how the uh, body works. Hi, Jane. Are you going to make it for Zoom tonight, Jane? Um, be nice to see you. Uh, I'll see you after this anyway for, for your um, Skype. Um, what was I saying? Yes, there's this practice that, that I teach. It's just got a fundamental part of um, uh, my, my teaching and uh, anyone that um, trains with me, they, they use it regularly. Hi, Corina. Nice to see you. Um, yes, it, this practice is, is, uh, is ostensibly very simple. It's lying down. Um, but it's, it's a way of um, teaching yourself how to do everything, really. And it goes very much with the questions involved um, on today's session. So uh, I call it, I have called it Maha Pranayama, as in the, it's the great breath. Um, I've been revising its name slightly because um, uh, the great breath implies that all you're doing is breathing. And uh, when people do breathing, they, they sort of miss the point. It's, um, it's a physical practice, so I'm, so I'm sort of starting to call it something like Maha Pranasana or something like pran, prani, Pranayamasana. I don't know. I'll, I'll come up with a name eventually. I'm, I'm possibly thinking of, of calling it Akvarivasana, just, just for the hell of it. Okay. So um, I'll explain it a little before I do it. Um, our problems with our posture, our standing and other things, is that we hold a pattern. We're holding ourselves in a position. And in doing so, we restrict ourselves from other ways of, su of support. And um, in principle, if we have a fully integrated body with the spine and the central axis of everything that we're doing, in principle, the outcome of that is that the movements of breathing themselves which are muscular activities but they happen autonomically um, because we are alive the movements of breathing themselves are enough more than enough to support us where we are in space and support us through the earth through the touch through our structure um, and where we are in space that's the ideal but our experience is we stand up and um, I'll, I'll exaggerate. Um, we stand up, and in, in the process of standing up, we, we create uh, lifting tension. So, for example, the habitual... Um, it's, not, it's not wrong to have a lumbar spine, but if the way you hold yourself up is with holding in the lumbar spine, then that will preclude the possibility of any sort of breathing support from the release of the breath in here because the spine at the back is doing the holding and that usually goes with um, knees that are locked and you know so all the muscles clamp to hold you up um, that's an example now if I'm holding myself up with these things then my breath is restricted to that which can breathe which will be in the belly and the chest essentially because I'm pulling up away from the ground so the breath can only be one thing. It's the thing that happens on top of my support. Okay. Um, the thing that's going to change this is changing everything. <laughs> and it's hard to let go of these things that we support ourselves with because this is our support. And it's what we've learned. And as far as our experience goes, it's, it just happens. So the, the yoga practice is to, is to um, be with the body now and to let go of anything habitual, any habitual way of doing things so that you can investigate choice. And the choice that we need, for example, instead of holding ourselves up with our knees, our, our thighs and our backs, 
the choice that we need is to let that go and to do that we have to change everything um, so that the breathing spaces can the fluid dynamics of the breath can support us through our bones you see um, we, we we lift ourselves up you know we lift ourselves up and we live in our heads so that's what we lift with and then our heads are up because we have lifted and the result is a disconnect between head and heart um, because of the tension of holding up and of course because we hold up ourselves up the same muscles that hold ourselves up pull us down because all the muscles can do is contract and then we're, we've got a breathing pattern i'm exaggerating we've got a breathing pattern this is this is a, a sort of a, a, a another one a kyphotic pattern we've got a breathing pattern that um relies on the rise and fall of the chest and as far as our experience goes of being upright is we feel upright but what we what, what is going on is we're holding ourselves up so and until the whole thing can change um it's almost impossible to um allow the breathing movements themselves to take over because to do so you'd have to let go of the thing that you're supporting yourself with and the thing you're supporting yourself with holds you in a position that means if if you let go you'll fall over <laughs> if you let go you'll collapse you see so so it's a very involved question kishori and um and it relates to yours um caroline it relates to the um the breathing in the pelvis it, it relates to breathing so what do we do we do this thing that i call mahapranayama or something like it and we have uh, seven or eight minutes so um, just watch for a second so i show you what we're doing um you lie down and I, i'm going to mix it up a little bit because um i want you to um work out how to stand with this so we're going to have usually i have uh, both feet on the ground and the hands up in the air but what I'd like, just to make you engage with something, is to have one leg straight with the, um, let's see if I can show you it, with the heel on the ground and the toes pointing upwards. And I want you to use that for support. So the action of um, pressing back through that heel, not pulling back with the knee, pressing back through the heel inv invites an opening of the foot, um, with the toes pointing vertically upwards and uh, the hands the, the, uh, instead of the hands being down by the side where you will tend to relax and be heavy on the chest i want the hands up in space okay so we'll get straight on with the practice because in this position um you can understand how to let go of tension along the front line of the body um deep inside the pelvis so you let you allow the pelvis to rest back as opposed to lifting it for your lumbers you allow the pelvis to rest back so that the space can develop between the base of the spine and the top of the diaphragm which is just below the heart so you allow that and that spaciousness wants to come up with the arms so that you allow a, a sense of opening at the heart which will um, press the head back okay so um, this is to allow space in the body and the result will be um, a firmer contact around the tail end of the base of the spine and a firmer contact around the head and a sense of extension as the inside of the body um, elongates along the front of the spine and then when you've got that feeling of resting back and I want it to be kind of equal between the back of the head so you could you could use the back of the head to lift your heart uh, the base of the spine you could use the base of the spine to lift your heart yes um a sense of equality of touch between those things so that this length and spaciousness is anchored at two ends okay and then when you have the hands in the air shoulders out of the way try not to pull them down in the back because that will get in the way of your breathing when you have the hands in the air and when you have your engagement with the feet so the the heel of the straight leg and the standing foot of the bent leg i want you to press down through the feet and press back with the head and um leg so the the overall 
outcome of that effort will be a gathering in the middle of the body. Okay? So what we've got is, is we've created a situation where there's more space, there's more distance along the front of the spine because you've let go back through the head and back through the tail. Okay? And you allow that to breathe, so there's a spaciousness in your lungs and across the heart. And then particularly with the release of the breath, if you em embrace the earth with your limb, uh, with your legs, your feet and the straight leg, there'll be an engagement with the earth. If you use your hands out in space and almost sort of pull back from there, then it should all help the middle of the body work as well. So what happens is the middle of the body gathers around the space that you've created. And the result is to breathe into the back of the solar plexus as well as the back of the head and the base of the spine. So that's the instructions. Um, it's a bit complicated to understand, but um, the reason I made a meal of it is because it's important to get, to engage, to engage with the touch of the head, to engage with the base of the spine, to engage with the limbs, hands and feet, back into the earth, because this is how you want to stand up. This is how you want to be vertical. Um, instead of holding yourself up, Instead of holding yourself up, you want to embrace the space behind you and you want that engagement to breathe. So there's a feeling of embracing the earth through the leg, through the foot. And as you use that touch for support, you breathe. So the breath will arrive in the back of you because of your efforts. So the spine is in inherently not carrying your weight, not lifting your weight. And this is a good practice because you've got a nice template of the earth. So you are vertical. Um, the use of the legs, if you pull the knees back, you'll pull the thighs tight, okay? If you pull the thighs tight, you'll stop the breath in the pelvis. So, Caroline, if you want to make sure that your hips and lower belly are breathing, um, then as well as using the feet that will help the belly move back, so that takes up the strain, of, if there's any strain around the base of the spine that is habitual, you, you can let go of that by using the feet, because it invites the core to work. But... The sensation is when you use the legs, it's the back of the legs that does the work. It's the backs of the knees that breathe. It's the back of the knee that breathes. It's the space in front of the groin that breathes because of your efforts. So you'll be using different muscles. You'll be using the, the feet, the ankles, and uh, some muscles in the back, back of the legs instead of pulling up with a kneecap. Okay? So what are we doing? We're pressing into the ground. We're trying to make touch equal. For no other reason than when it is equal, the mind becomes calm. And when the touch is equal, and I'm, I'm talking about the use of the hands as much as the feet as well, as if you have something to support yourself with in the hands, okay? When the touch is equal, something centers, something simplifies. When the touch can remain equal through the cycle of the breath, you'll find that the spine is not fixed against the breath. So the breath will arrive in the back of the body. It'll feel like that. And uh, for that to be possible, you need to be able to release across the pelvic floor, across the base of the spine behind you, and use your efforts to breathe. So your engagement with your breathe. Put your back into breathing into your back. And there'll be a widening feeling that keeps you sort of empty along the front. And then as you release the breath, the same engagement with your earth, with your hands, with your feet, the same intention to make it equal, will cause the inside of the, a gathering around that vertical space to happen. And that's around the solar plexus a little more, around the ribs and upper belly, possibly. But all, all the, all the, all the uh, chakra spaces are sort of dissolved into as a result of your very real physical engagement. Uh, the purpose of having one foot standing and one leg straight is to work out how to use a standing leg, but at, at the same time as working out how to use a foot. Um, and then you can swap sides. The bell meant we have um, about four or five minutes. So if you swap sides, then you've got the other standing foot and the other leg straight. The back of it, the heel is the purchase to make the base of the spine light. And as you press back through the straight leg, as you press back 
through the standing foot, as you press back through the head, as you embrace the earth and breathe, back from the hands. The result of this efforting is a widening from the spine behind you as the breath arrives, from the points of contact, a widening, and as you release the breath, same effort, same engagement, all gathering around the central space, whilst you express outwards in space through the feet, through the toes, and a sense of doing something similar through the hands. Without hands and feet, you won't have a natural core response. It'll just be the effort. And, uh, <laughs> excuse me, Kent. Okay. So keep the engagement going, but make it rhythmic, make it breathe, let it breathe. And, uh, and you know, the, the, um, uh, the physical engagement involved in doing so will be teaching your body to breathe itself into uprightness. The, the overall result of what you're doing, if you're still practicing, I hope so, the overall result of what you are doing will be that the spine behind the heart um, elongates a little. The, 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 the roundedness of the upper back um, starts to reverse. It is the, it is the heart opening up that sends the head back in space. It's the heart opening up, sends the base of the spine back in space. It is the breathing in the central space that gathers you together and gets you to meet the space between um, the head and the base of the spine, behind you. So how long have we got? We've got, um, I've got a, a minute or so. <laughs> so uh, that practice has taught you how to stand. Uh, uh, should we just briefly have a go? It's the same stuff, you see. So if you, uh, yes, if you come to standing, um, I don't know if Beelive Be Live will let me do this for a run over time, but we'll see. Um, it's the same stuff. Instead of holding yourself up, you can meet the space behind your legs as if the ground is still there, yeah? behind the heel, behind the legs. And doing so will create a space across the pelvis that can breathe for you, Caroline. It also needs to create a space across the base of the spine here, uh, and I remember, I remember your body, so I'm, I know that there's a there's a tightness, a lift here, and that's the same for you, Kishori. Um, you need to be able to breathe that space, and the engagement from the feet back through the heel, back through the legs, will work muscles behind the legs a little more, and create a, a space in here that breathes. Instead of lifting the head, which pulls you down. Meet the space behind the head as if the ground is still there, and and it wants to match behind the legs. And if you if you use that space, if you if you do the, something similar back from the arms, you know, the arms are by your side. Meet the space behind your le your arms, behind your legs, and the space within at the front will expand and become free to breathe um, as you breathe into the space behind. The result of this engagement is that when you release the breath and give that release to your heels, this space is gathered around and the result is a potential release of tension through the spine. Not because you have put the spine in the right position, but because you're engaging with your earth and with your space in a way that supports you engaging with your space in a way that supports you, as opposed to holding up away from the ground, as opposed to holding up away from space. You meet space, you meet the earth, and those things together support you through your center, through the rhythms of breathing. Okay, I think I've um, gone over time, so I shall, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping the broadcast is still working. Um, what are we doing? Uh, I don't have any workshops coming up immediately. There's something in September, I think. Uh, we're off to Italy next week on our amazing retreat. It's, it's full now, so um, no more spaces. If you're interested for next year, do, do um, get in touch because uh, spaces go very quickly for our Italy retreat in, in Sabina. It's um, an amazing experience. Um, that week, um, so am I here? I'm, I think I'm here next week, am I? Oh yes, so uh, we're going to Exhale Festival. So uh, I'll be teaching on the Sunday morning at Exhale Festival, uh, 11 o'clock, I'm not sure which 
part of the festival, uh, which part of the uh, venue I'll be teaching at, but I'll find out when I get there. Um, come along, that's free if, you, if, you, if you're there. Um, oh, thanks, Alan, letting me know it's still working. Um, what else? Uh, that's about it, really. I'll, I'll, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm here next week or not. Depends on the date. Let's see. What's the date? 22nd. I think I am. Yes. Yes, I'll be here next Tuesday, 10.30. Um, if this was of, of any use to you, if you enjoyed it, please pass it on. Um, please share. You're all doing a wonderful job of sharing this work around. Thank you so much. Um, yes. So um, I think that's enough. Um, there's a, if I'm a bit high for today, it's because I had a couple of coffees. So apologies if I'm talking too fast. But um, anyway, I hope that was useful. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, I very much enjoyed these sessions. Uh, those of you, uh, those Aquaviva students out there, I'll see you tonight at six if you can make the Zoom. And otherwise, uh, I'll see the rest of you uh, next Tuesday, 10.30. That's the spot I'm doing now, I think. Uh, I prefer it. Um, so I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. I hope that was useful. Please, please do share it around. Um, and I shall see you next week. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs>